seven signs to tell that he's using you. So number one, we have inconsistency. Now, some of you guys might be like, oh yeah, well, pretty straightforward. If he's inconsistent with me, of course, he's not really interested in me. And of course, he's probably using me. But a lot of us don't really understand what inconsistency really means. Because a guy can treat you well. A guy can take you out on dates. A guy can be respectful towards you. A guy can show and tell you that he wants to be with you yet still be inconsistent. I think a lot of times when we imagine inconsistency, we imagine someone like ghosting us or not texting us for like an entire week. You know what I mean? Just something like extreme. But I want you to understand also the people that are treating you well when they're around you can be inconsistent with you. And keep in mind, there's a difference between being inconsistent and genuinely like having uh, obligations and responsibilities and being busy and not being able to be with you and around you 24 seven, right? Even someone who is busy or has a schedule in the process of being busy and having a schedule can, if they care enough about you, they can let you know, hey, I got this going on. I got that going on. So I'm just letting you know ahead of time that, you know, I won't be able to hang out. I won't be able to talk. I won't be able to whatever. Yes, he's allowed to be busy. Yes, he's allowed to have a schedule. Yes, he's allowed to have things that he wants to do for himself. But being inconsistent is a very different story because you can still be inconsistent and be a nice guy. You can still be inconsistent and be a respectful guy. They are only usually, usually only giving you attention or paying attention to you, or caring about you when it serves them. And when it doesn't serve them, they don't, they aren't that bothered about you or what's going on with you or your life or anything about you. I'll give you an example. Okay. Inconsistency would be if you were to go out on a date with the guy and he's like, okay, yeah, you know, up leading up to the date, right? Let's say a couple of days before a day before, right? He's texting you and all that good stuff, right? Because it's leading up to the day and he knows he wants to see you. He wants to secure the day, all that good stuff. You understand him to be a particular person, right? So he texts you, he calls you, he keeps up with you, all that good stuff. You guys go on the date and let's say you guys don't have sex. Oh, I don't want to say S-E-X. You don't have pineapples. Or actually, let's even say that you do have pineapples. And then after the date, right? All of a sudden, he goes back to his personality or the way he deals with you or approaches you change changes because beforehand, well, before you guys went on the date and when you guys hadn't had pineapples, he was more than willing to go out of his way to text you and more than willing to go out of his way to call you and more than willing to go out of his way to, oh, I'll pick you up in the car. Oh, I, I got this, but I'll move it around so that I can be with you so that we can hang out or whenever you want, whatever time is good for you, this and that. He was super accommodating, nice and respectful, right? So you understood that as his baseline. And then all of a sudden, after you guys had pineapples together and you gave him your squirtle, now all of a sudden he's really busy now all of a sudden he's got a lot of work stuff going on now all of a sudden he's got this massive schedule to uh, keep up with and you don't really hear from him for about a week or so like barely even hear from him barely even get texts definitely don't get calls and then after about a week and a half you get this flood of of text messages and calls. What are you up to? Where you been? Where you been at? Yo, why you why you don't talk to me no more? Da, da, da. Oh, I just been busy. Yo, you trying to go out? You trying to come over to my place? What are you trying to do today? Like they'll text you or they'll call you or they'll, they'll speak to you and be like, yo, I apologize for not being able to check in or whatever it's the past couple of days or the past week. Can we hang out today? Can we hang out tomorrow? Can we hang out in an hour? And that's inconsistency. Because the flood of messages and calls and uh, text when it's like, okay, we're going to meet up. Can we meet up? I want to meet up. So now I, you know, my personality is going to be of someone I can make time for you. Oh, I got, I had a work thing, but I can move the work thing. Oh, I had, I had, I had a, I had a family thing, but I can move the family thing. Oh, I was supposed to do this, but no, I'll hang out with you instead. When it comes to, you know, he's ready to ready. He's ready at the times where maybe he's not ready. He's got other things to tend to. Maybe he's just bored of you. Maybe he's not that interested. All of a sudden, his personality changes. All of a sudden, his approach changes. So now you're getting this inconsistency in character. The inconsistency I'm talking about is not just the schedule because someone can be busy one week and then be not busy the next week. It's the inconsistency in 
character. Even if he's so busy that he can't call you or text you or message you or whatever, he'll at least get ahead of it and schedule out time with you, block out time with you, or let you know that he's going to be busy. If he's inconsistent with this character, it's it's more than likely because he's using you for your squirtle. Number two, late nights. Late nights is when guys are texting you or calling you specifically late at night to hang out right now, right this second. They'll usually present it to you as if the desire just has been burning inside them and they're hitting you up or texting you or messaging you right now at this second because the desire is so great and so unbelievably strong that there is no choice for them but to see you right now this second they're usually not going to tell you hey my desire is underneath my waist and it's about two inches and it's rock solid that's the desire i'm talking about right they're usually not going to say that they're going to make you feel like the desire is really about their desire for you and the person that you are and that they just you know you're just such a princess you're just such an amazing beautiful woman and intelligent mind that being in your presence would literally satisfy them and fulfill them uh to the fullest but after a while you'll realize if they're going to hit you up only when it's late at night it's because they're he's really trying to use you that's, that's really what's happening. He's not hitting you up late at night because you're the most amazing special person that he's ever met. Because in reality, he could hang out with you perfectly fine at 2 p.m. on a Tuesday. He could hang out with you perfectly fine at 6 p.m. on a Wednesday. He could hang out with you perfectly fine anytime during the day when the sun is out. So the idea that he would specifically only text you and call you when it's late at night should tell you a lot about how he really feels about you because there's really not too much great conversation that you're going to have in a car late at night. I'm not saying that you should never hang out with the guy late at night, but you should also be aware of if he's only calling you and texting you late at night because it goes back to the inconsistency where you don't really get too many calls and texts from the guy during the day. And then all of a sudden, when on a random Saturday night, you're getting a bunch of calls and texts from him. I will tell you right now, for those of you who are unfamiliar, I'll be the first one to tell you. If a guy is calling or texting you after the club, he does not want to get to know you. He is not interested in getting to know you if he's texting you after or during the club. I promise you. Don't let any amount of texts and calls and kind messages. Oh, what are you up to? Where are you at? to convince you that he's really interested in you if he's calling you during or after the club. If you know he went to the club with his boys, or maybe his boys and his girls, and he's texting you talking about where you at, what are you doing, what you want, what you up to, all he cares about is what's in between your legs. I don't know if you've ever had someone tell you this or say this saying to you, but nothing good ever happens after 2 a.m. Assuming he's selling you a dream and he's calling you at 2 a.m., he's not going to say, yo, I want access to that squirtle. He's going to say, yo, you know, I miss you type, yo, shawty, yo, I, yo, I'm, I'm, yo, the way I miss you, girl, yo, yo, you've been on my mind crazy, like, yo, I just, yo, I, I can't stop thinking about you, yo, like, you, you got, yo, you got to slide through on me, yo, when you going to pull up on me for real, shawty, like, I, I mess with you heavy type shit, yo, you, you just a different type of girl, yo, like, you the type of girl I need in my life, yo, when, when you gonna stop playing with me, they, they love that one, when you gonna stop playing with me, girl, yo, you play too much, yo, like, you know I want you, like, you, you know we supposed to be together type, yo, me and you type, yo, we supposed to be against the world, yo, you play too much. What guys are trying to do they're trying to get you so emotional about the situation. They're trying to get you to focus on how you feel, focus on how much they care about you, focus on how much they want you, that you get caught up in all of the emotion and you stop thinking logically. Because the logical part of your brain would tell you, 
uh yeah if he's calling me at 2 a.m and he hasn't spoken to me any other time during the week there is nothing in particular he wants to talk about he don't he don't have no heart to heart that he wants to discuss he don't have no situation that he wants to discuss there wasn't no damn revelation that he came to that he wants to discuss he wants to discuss what's in between my legs if you sat back and were real with yourself you would easily be able to identify that but a lot of times you get emotional about the situation number three we have no future talk if a man is well-intentioned, I'm not saying that every single man has bad intentions, but if a man that meets you is well-intentioned, there will be men that out there that are well-intentioned, his plans with you will consist of now, but also well into the future. So a lot of the discussions you guys have with each other, even when you're arguing with each other, a lot of the solutions that you come up with in your relationship will always be meant to be future proof, right? Or will always consider how you guys will respond and react and go about things or approach things in the future. You understand what I'm saying? Everything that your relationship consists of and is about will be focused on how you guys are going to carry that into the future. So if there is a particular thing that you're doing, right? Or that he doesn't like, or that he doesn't appreciate, or even a particular way that you disrespect him, you better believe he's going to address it right away. And then he's also going to explain to you that part of the reason he's addressing it, or part of the reason it's important to him is because he doesn't want this to, to go on into the future. You'll hear him in his arguments, talk to you about the future, because even the solutions and the arguments you guys have will also be focused on how to avoid those same arguments or fights in the future. You'll hear him talk about when he's happy, he'll talk about the future, right? And how to sustain that happiness, how to keep that happiness, how to keep those good feelings going, right? How to keep that fire going, right? In the process of family, you'll, with you, his family, and your family, meeting your family, talking to your family, creating relationships and connections with your family, your friends as well, all of the things he talks about as they consist, to, consist of and relate to your relationship will always be focused on the future. Because if he's planning to be with you for the quote unquote rest of his life, it's going to be important what's happening now, but it also be even more important that things are adjusted and learned and understood for the future so that the good things continue to happen and the bad things don't happen as much, right? It's not that he'll never want to fight with you, but even when he does fight with you or disagree with you or argue with you, he'll want to make sure let's come to an understanding so we don't continue to have this same argument, this same fight the same issue right and vice versa if you have an issue with him or a problem with him if he disrespects you or does something to you he's going to want to make sure he remedies that or at least attempts to remedy it or come to some sort of compromise so that you guys don't continue to have the same issues in the future because if a man is planning to spend the rest of his life with you he definitely doesn't want you to have the same issues and complain about the same things over and over and over and over again for the rest of his life, right? He's going to want to come to some sort of understanding solution or compromise with the issues that you have with him so that you don't continue to have those issues and vice versa. He's going to be very concerned or focused on any issues that he does have with you to make sure they get remedied or you guys can come to some sort of compromise so that... Your relationship can continue to be good on into the future. So if you notice that a guy is always talking about, oh, uh, you know, I don't really, you know, I don't really want to think too much about the future. You know, I just want to focus on right now. Yo, you know, I'm not really thinking about who I'm going to date five years from now. I just want to focus on right now. Even if he's talking about himself as it only relates to the present, that's a sign that he's using you. Even if you ask him questions like, yo, where do you want to be within yourself, like within in your career, in your job, in your life, where do you want to be in five years? And he tells you, oh, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm not thinking about that right now. I'm just focusing on them on the present right now. I'm just, I'm just worried about right now in this second. There's nothing wrong with being present, but if you don't have a plan for the future, if you don't have a plan for your life, life is going to take you wherever it wants to take you. The only people that are ever successful or get what they want are the people that plan for the future. And I guarantee you the only men that get what they want are the people that plan for 
the future. So one of two things is happening. Either you're with a man who has no direction, in which case I guarantee you, you'll be unhappy as a woman. Or you're with a man who's only thinking of the present simply because he doesn't have any plans for you or himself or both going into the future. Either way, you're doomed in that scenario, right? Because if he's only with you for the present and only focused on the present, right? And he's not thinking about the future. I guarantee you there will be no future because you can't get what you want if you don't know what you're shooting for. It's impossible. You have to know what you're working towards to work towards anything, even in a relationship. This is why I always tell you guys, good relationships take work. They take a lot of work, right? Being desirable to men takes work. It takes a lot of work. Being desirable as a man to woman takes work. It takes a lot of work. If you want to have a good, healthy relationship, it's going to take work. There is no version of a good relationship where you just sit back on your couch and eat potato chips and your man loves you and cherishes you and is loyal to you and rubs your feet every night. You're going to have to work to get him to desire you as much as possible. He's going to have to work to get you to desire him. You guys are both going to have to work together to keep the fire lit, to keep the romance there, right? To keep the relationship strong. That takes work. So if a guy is only focused on the few on the present with you and never thinking about the future because he doesn't want to stress him out, he only wants to focus on right now, the future doesn't matter. Well, he's not shooting for any sort of relationship with you because there's no way he can possibly ever build a good relationship with you if he doesn't even know what that good relationship is going to look like in the future or at least what he wants it to look like. Your desires are the key to unlocking whatever it is that you want. You have to know what you're even desiring before you can even get it. You can't just say, yeah, I want a good relationship, but I don't know what it's going to look like. I'm just hoping that someone will show that to me. That's not how that works. You should know what you want in this good relationship in a way that works for you so that you can work towards that. The same way for the guys, the guys need to know what type of wife they want, what type of mother they want, what type of girlfriend they want, what type of relationship they want. And they should be working towards that. If they are not with you, then I guarantee you he's only there for the present pleasure. Number four, we have not solution based. After you guys have your disagreement, everyone will bring their side to the table, their perspective, how they feel what they want, right? What they liked, what they disliked, right? You guys will come together and come to an understanding after the disagreement, right? But then what will also happen, what also should happen after that is there should be a process of figuring out what is the best solution moving forward, whether it be a compromise whether it be that, okay, you, I didn't do something that you, uh, I did something that you didn't like. And now that I understand why and how you didn't like it, I'm going to adjust my behavior in the future by doing this, or I'm going to adjust myself by uh, responding or approaching it like this instead in a way that works better for you. And also I can do right now that I better understand how you feel. I'm going to make sure either I don't do that or make sure that I work on that or make sure that I approach that differently or vice versa, right? You're going to say, now that I understand how you feel and all that, he's going to say, well, yeah, so this is the best solution or this is how we should deal with it. There will always be a concerted effort to figure out whatever the solution is so that that issue or problem doesn't continue to be an issue or problem. Now, if you find yourself in a relationship or a situationship with a guy where there's never any concerted or concentrated effort to finding solutions to problems or issues, then you know that he has no interest in you for the future. And the reason he doesn't care to address whether it be his issues or your issues or disagreements is because he's only using you for the present pleasure. 
Because when all he wants from you is to satisfy his present pleasure, he doesn't care whether or not you guys come to an agreement or an understanding on these particular issues. He doesn't care whether or not you or you feel happy or satisfied with the compromise that you guys make. He doesn't care whether or not he even addresses the things or issues that he has problems with. Right? Because that can go vice versa too. If you're with the guy and you start realizing that he never presents to you any issues that he has, he never shares with you his opinion on anything, he never shares with you how he feels about anything, he never tells you, hey, I don't like that you said this, or I don't like the way you spoke to me, or I don't, I don't like the way you responded to me, I don't like the way you treated me. If he never addresses anything, right? If he's never confrontational or lets you, I don't even want to say confrontational, if he never lets you know, hey, I have issues with this, I don't agree with this, I don't like this, that should tell you he's not addressing it because he doesn't even care enough to address it because he doesn't want a future with you. And if he doesn't want a future with you, then he's using you for the present pleasure. Because if I don't want a future with someone, why would I bother to address any of the issues I have with them? If I'm not trying to build a future with you, it's pointless for me to address any issues that I have with you. I'm going to throw you away in a couple of weeks, or I'm going to throw you to the side once I go back to my ex. Right? Think about it for yourself as well. Let me know in the chat for yourself as well. If you were, for whatever reason, let's say you were going out on dates with the guy who was like trying to wine and dine you. He was trying to take you to all the fanciest restaurants, all the most beautiful, amazing places, but you really just weren't that interested in him. On top of that, you were probably still involved with your ex right? Imagine you were still involved heavily with your ex. You still had a, a lot of love for your ex, still wanting to see your ex, still thinking about your ex. And this guy is spending $200 on a date with you. And imagine on the date, he says something that you don't like, or, or he does something that throws you off. Are you really going to bother addressing it when you know you're most likely going to end up back with your ex? Or you're going to go back and see your ex or spend time with your ex because you know you and your ex are likely getting back together. Number five, calculated attention. There is a learned behavior that men develop where they understand that the best way to get access to you is to feed your ego. Okay. Now, feeding a woman's ego is going to be very different from feeding a man's ego. Right. Because for film. For, Feeding a woman's ego is going to consist of selling her the dream that she wants to exist, making her feel like that dream is existing and happening so that I can use that to my advantage and extract what I want from her, right? So when I talk about feeding your ego as a woman, right, the men realize that if I make her feel like she's the only one in the world for me and I only want her and I desire her so much and she's such an amazing person. I make her feel so beautiful, so loved, so cherished. I make her feel like Cinderella, like I'm her Prince Charming here to sweep her off her feet and I'm and I'm and uh, she's Cinderella with a glass slipper and there's no one else that I could possibly think of on this planet Earth but her, right? I'm essentially getting her so emotional right? And validating her so much to the point where she believes, oh no, this is my moment. This is my Cinderella story. This is my Wattpad story. This is my smut book. This is my Disney princess movie, right? And that emotion, that overwhelming amount of emotion pushes you to make decisions without actually sitting back and thinking of the decision that you're making, right? For example, giving your squirrel away to a guy that you really don't know that well, but just assuming that you guys have a good connection because of how you feel right now in this present moment, how you feel in this present moment, right? Being overwhelmed with all these emotions and not being able to sit back and think logically will convince you that, yeah, you know what? In this present moment, the right decision is to give my squirrel away to a guy who I don't really know. And trust you, me, most of the time that you're giving your squirrel away to these guys, even the guys that you're dating, you don't really know. We did an amazing that if you go on three dates a week with a guy for three months straight, right? 
and those dates each last three hours each, that calculates out to spending a total of 4.5 days with that person. So it's like a sales tactic, right? The best way to sell some, someone something is to get them emotional about the product or to tie it somehow to their emotions so that they're no longer thinking, do I really need this? Is this really worth the amount of money to spend? Uh, nah, that does that. That's not really a financially, that's not a financially literate uh, purchase. No, the salesman doesn't want you to think like that. The salesman wants you to think, if you don't get this, your, your pencil's gonna dry up. If you don't do this right now or get this pill right now, your life's gonna be ruined. If you don't do this thing right now in this second and call this toll-free number and get this discount for 50% off, you're never going to be able to get this again, right? Scarcity. Oh my God, it's leaving you right now. Oh my God, FOMO right now. You get so emotional about the situation that you stop thinking logically. So number six is forgetful. Now you're probably saying, what do you mean forgetful? So if he forgets our three month anniversary, that means he's using me. No, let's be for real. When I say forgetful, right, what I mean by that is you'll start to notice, and this is where I say you really have to be tapped into your spirit and your intuition because you'll be able to feel it. He's forgetful about things that you share with him, even that are deep or close to you, right? Like, have you ever, let me know in the chat, have you ever had a heart to heart with someone and told them something, whether you consider it a secret or something that's really close to your heart? And like a couple of days after that, they've forgotten everything that you told them. They start asking you questions and you're like, we literally had this conversation and I told you about this traumatic event or story that had happened to me and you forgot about it. You don't remember? We, we literally had a heart to heart. And I told you about this thing and how super deep it was and important to me it was. And what I went through in that situation. And they're like, oh, uh, my bad, uh, my bad, I forgot. Uh, you're right. It'll be very, it'll be very, it'll be impossible for a man to love you truly. And you tell him something so deep, something so intimate, something so important and close to your soul that you wouldn't share with anyone else. It would be impossible for him to love you and forget that like a fart in the wind. Because when you're important to him, right, your life becomes important to him. The things you care about, the experiences you've been through become important to him. It's impossible to forget when you truly care for someone. The things that they share with you that are deep for real. For real. They're just, they just become etched in your brain because there's this amazing thing about like the human soul where the people that we love the most, we can empathize with the most. And so when they, when they feel pain, you can feel that pain also. When you really love someone and they're in pain, you can literally feel that pain in your soul. It's, it's a connection that we can't see or touch or feel. Well, we feel it with our soul and our spirit, right? So when you're sharing with someone pain that you've been through and they're just like, oh yeah, whatever, they forget about it or it doesn't seem to matter to them, it's because they're not truly deeply connected with you or else it would be impossible for them to not feel that same pain. <laughs> so when you find yourself in a situation that you're sharing with him with those things that are so painful to you. And then the next day he's like, Oh, sorry. What did you, you were, what did you say about that thing again? Yeah, no, sorry. I forgot. I just, whether he's aware of it or not, that's subconsciously telling you that should tell you that subconsciously, he's really not that interested in you. He's de definitely sure not in love with you. I'll tell you that for free. Okay. Cause anytime you love someone and they tell you things that are painful to them, you're going to be in pain too. Experiences that are painful, you're going to be in pain too. You're going to remember those things. That forgetfulness is only going to, should be telling you that they're not that interested in you. And so anything important that you do tell them, 
It's like a fart in the wind. Number seven and the last one and the most important one, lack of detail. When you ask a guy what he loves about you or likes about you, whatever, we'll say loves because let's talk about serious relationships. When you ask a guy what he loves about you and he can't actually describe in detail what he actually loves about you specifically, oh my goodness, that is the strongest sign that he is using you. As a man who has been in love, I feel very confident in speaking for other men when I say, if a man is really in love with you, I promise you, he knows what he loves about you and why he loves you specifically. Oh God, yes, 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 yes. You, 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 you have to understand that there is something really special that happens to a man when he's really truly in love with a woman right? When he really truly is in love with the woman, right? You notice so much detail about someone that you love. Truly, truly. It becomes like they become a part of you in the strangest way, right? Like I talked about, you feel what they feel. You understand them. You start finishing their sentences. You almost like become them. I don't know if you guys have ever um, heard the saying or the concept that like people that have been together for such a long time start to look like each other, right? People that have been married for such a long time, they start to look like each other because you, you, you be, it's like that person becomes a part of you to the point where you guys morph and change and into like the same person you guys both have these unique traits that you sort of like share and as time goes on you like mold into like the same person it's so strange but it's such a beautiful thing about love and relationships but i say that to say if a guy really loves you i promise you he knows what he loves about you which is why i always tell you guys what do you guys, for those of you guys who are the super A plus students in my live stream chat, you should know what this is that I'm about to say. What do I always tell you guys is one of the best questions to ask a guy to get an understanding of what he likes about you. So this is what you ask if you want to gauge a guy's interest in you. You ask him, what character or personality traits unique to me, do you like about me specifically? Any guy who is truly interested in you and not just using you will definitely be able to answer that question because the only way to answer that question properly is to answer it in detail with specifics. And that's what you want. Now, I know some of you guys are new here, so I'm going to give you the three types of answers you do not accept if you ask him this question. And when I say do not accept, I mean that is not an answer to the question. Okay. So if he's struggling to answer the question aside from in these, like if, the, if he answers the question in these three ways, you know something's wrong, something's off. And if he can't answer the question aside from in these three ways, you know something's off. And I'm so serious about this. You do not accept an answer that has to do with your physical traits. You do not an, accept an answer that is vague. And you do not accept an answer that relates back to you. But sorry, that relates back to himself. Number one, you do not accept an answer that has to do with your physical traits. If you ask him this question, what uh, character or personality traits unique to me do you like about me specifically? And he says, I like that you have such a big booty. I like that you have voluptuous breasts. I like that you have a supermodel smile. I like that you are just have such a small waist okay if he answers you like that you do not accept that simply because no matter how young and hot you are right now you will eventually be young and old sorry hot and old There's nothing wrong with that we all age okay the problem is beauty is tied to youth so as you become older you become less desirable, right? Here's the problem though. You're going to get older. 
So what happens if all of his reasoning for being with you or loving you is based on your physical traits when you're youthful because eventually you'll be older and you won't have your youth or your physical traits to rely upon. So then what happens if all of all of his focus has been on your physical traits? His head turns to the newer, younger, hotter girl. And you've lost your man just that fast. The next thing is it being vague. You don't want to accept an answer that is vague. By vague, I mean something like, oh, uh, you're so nice. You're so kind. Uh, you uh, are so good. You're just a good person. You're just great. Things like that that can apply to literally anyone, literally anyone, his mother, his brother, his dog. <laughs> Statements that just mean nothing because they're extremely vague. I think that one's straightforward. You know when someone's being vague because you'll be like, okay, and, and more, right? Number three, this is the one that's the hardest to understand and grasp because usually this is the, this is. I would probably say that the, when a guy's either trying to trick you or trying to be slick, this is usually the go-to one that guys use without even realizing it when they're trying to seem meaningful, but they don't actually mean it. They'll use an answer that relates back to themselves. I know that's a little bit confusing for you, some of you guys. I'll explain. A, he'll use an answer that relates back to himself because it's not really about who you are. It's more about how you treat and serve him. The problem with that, though, is if the reason he's with you is about how you treat him, realistically, he can get anyone to treat him that way. It's not really about you specifically. It's more about you treating him this specific way. So... Heaven forbid another girl comes along that's prettier than you, that treats him that same way, he'll be gone. You understand what I mean? So the reason I say you don't want it to relate back to, that's the reason I say you don't want it to relate back to him. Because that's not really about who you are, the person you are. It's not about him taking notice about the details of, who, of, your, of your character and your personality and falling in love with the person that you are. It's really just... A, a reflection of him and him looking and thinking about himself, right? And a lot of guys will go to that when they're trying to make it seem like they're really into you, but they don't know how to, what to say or how to describe it. So they'll use that one because they don't want to be, they, they know they're probably smart enough to know that being vague would probably turn you off or get, raise up red flags. And they're probably also smart enough to know that saying, oh, you got a big booty. That's the reason I love you would sound really strange and be a super red flag. So they usually use that one when they're trying to be slick. But I'm telling you this now so you know that they're trying to be slick and you don't fall for it, right? You don't want him to give you an answer that relates back to himself. Because like I said, lack of detail will tell you that he's using you. And if he can't tell you in detail why he loves you, I'm talking about you, you, you specifically and your personality and your character. I promise you he's just using you.